How is everybody? Good? Yeah? Good? All right. Well, this is my first time in the Czech Republic. 
my first day in the Czech Republic, really. I got to walk around this beautiful city today and check everything out. And I got to say, it probably ranks up there in the top five places I've been in the world, just in terms of sheer beauty. And you walk around, it's just like, whoa. You, know, you guys are probably really used to it, right? You're just like, yeah, you know, fucking castle, building, whatever. It's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all just a bunch of shit, you know, but... To me, it's it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful place. So, I love uh, I love where you guys are located. So, happy to be here tonight, playing some uh, aggressive music for you. And uh, of course, Nick's gonna come up here and play some very beautiful music for you, and uh, melt all your faces. So there'll be towels at the back door when you leave. <laughs> I'll play one more, and then uh, what we usually like to do with these is we like to take questions from you guys, and you know, if you have any questions for Nick or I, um, we're happy to answer them for you. Uh, you know, we never know when we're going to be here again, so it's it's a good time to chat and you know, just kind of hang out, have fun. You know, no one needs to be shy, no one needs to worry. I'm the one who needs to worry, right? So, all right, well, I'll play one more for you. So go ahead and think about some questions, and uh, we'll hang out. All right, thank you.
Cheers, guys. So, that happened. Anybody have any questions for me at all? First person gets a guitar pick. That guy right there. Back, back behind the board guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we've actually been working on some stuff. Um, we're looking at hopefully putting some to something together. We're going to start actively writing for it early next year and then uh, keep going until it's done. Um, it's hard to put a kind of timeline on something like that because Jeff is obviously a pretty busy guy. Um, he's traveling a lot, doing a lot of touring with Arch Enemy. Um, you know, and of course the other guys are, are in other bands as well. So it's it's sort of hard for us to all kind of line up and, and get music together. But we are working on it. And I uh, actually wrote some stuff right before I left for this trip. So, yeah, you will see some, some Conquering Dystopia in the future at some point. Cool, man. Yeah, hit me up uh, at the table afterwards. I'll hook you up with a pick. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, something from old album. Uh, let me see what I have for you. Old album. I'm mostly out here playing new stuff. I'll play that one for you. Yeah, yeah. But give me a few and I'll play that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? Right hand picking stuff? Um, you know... I've never really thought about it that much. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have never really sat down and, and analyzed what I'm doing, really, until people ask, of course. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. You know, if you've, if you've played metal guitar for long enough, all this kind of stuff is just second nature. You know, like the... So when you're trying to do trem pick, like right hand stuff, if you really kind of relax your hand and use just your wrist, you know, um, a lot of guys, they, they kind of grind the guitar with their whole arm. And it's really hard to get articulate like that if, you're, if you have that much movement. So I think if you just kind of lay back and uh, you just relax and uh, really have a metronome going in your head when you do it too, you know, like, like that riff, for example. Sounds weird with delay. Hold on. Okay, so like on that riff, it's alternating between like eighth notes and like sixteenth note triplets. So you're going like. But you're keeping like a constant. Oh, this is boomy. So, you know, you just try to keep in keeping your head like a steady rhythm, and then you can play triplets, you can play whatever you want. Um, but the main thing is just really you have to you have to kind of choke up on the pick too. You know, I tend to um, hold it a little bit differently when I'm doing like articulate stuff. Um, hold it a little further down, so just just the tip, bro. <laughs> Um, and that, that kind of, that kind of helps you relax a little bit too, you know, cause you know, you're only using a very small portion of the pick when you do it. You don't want to really like, you know, dig in. There's like no way you can get that sort of articulation if you have like that much of the pick sticking out, if that makes any sense. So cool. Anyone else? What's up, buddy? Um, actually, I got my first Kemper before they even hit the streets. Um, I was approached by Christoph Kemper when he was kind of in the final, final stages of development of it. And when the first production samples came out, I got one of them. And, uh, I've pretty much been using it ever since then. Um, I got it and it was like life changing. Yeah, I think I had it quite a while before they actually were released, and so I got to spend a lot of time with it. And I had to kind of hold my tongue and not tell anybody about it because it's like this alien technology that steals souls from amps and does all this crazy stuff. 
but uh yeah i mean it's been it's been what i've used live for years now um ever since it came out um i use it in the studio a lot for pre-production stuff um i mainly record with real amps but mostly uh you know kemper just gets it done for me so yeah yeah anyone else just want some more tunes Multi-scale guitars? Um, I've had a couple of them, and I just didn't ever really see a huge benefit to it for myself. Um, I see the benefit of it, but for the kind of stuff that I play, there's not a huge benefit. Because um, I'm I'm more of like a rhythm-style guitar player, and, and I don't focus too much on like the need to have super bendy high-end you know, leads and things like that. So um, to have like a 25-inch... How many of you guys know what a multi-scale guitar is? I think you're the only one. <laughs> um, so a multi-scale guitar basically is the the high side is like 25 and a half inch scale and the low side is 27, so it's a fanned fret guitar. Um, and the benefit of that would be the low strings are tighter. Uh, you have more intonation range and then the higher strings feel more like a six string guitar or something, so. Um, they're cool for that, but for the stuff that I play, I don't really need it. So I've never really, never really gone down that hole. You know, this is plenty for me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I don't go by scales at all cause I don't know any, um, I just, uh, I, I look at guitar like a paintbrush. This is my paintbrush. I don't know any theory. I'm all self-taught. I don't know any scales. I couldn't tell you what it is I'm playing. I just, uh, I just kind of play what I hear in my head and record what I hear in my head. I add textures and layers to it with a you know bunch of different guitar sounds until it paints the picture that I want. Um, so the thought process usually is it starts with guitar. I'll come up with a couple ideas. I'll build some chords that I think have a cool sound to them. And then, uh, and then I just build upon that. You know, you start with a foundation and, and you just kind of keep going until it feels completed to you. Um, and that can happen in a variety of different ways and a variety of different moods. Uh, I like to write when I'm traveling because um, it sort of captures a moment in time, captures a place. Uh, you know, like I, I would really love to go back to my hotel tonight and write something here in Prague, uh, just so I can remember it. So every time that comes around on the record or the song or whatever, I can go, Oh, I wrote that in Prague. I remember. And then it makes you think about it. So it has more meaning for me to do it that way. That doesn't translate to the listener or, you know, really anybody, but it gives it meaning for me. And I, I think that's an important element. You know, everything has to have a meaning. Um, otherwise it's just some notes. <laughs> so does that, does that answer your question at all? A little bit. All right, cool. Well, I'll play a couple more and then we'll take some more questions if you guys have them. And, uh, thanks.
Sweet. How many of you guys here like metal guitar? Nobody? All right. I'm in the right place. <laughs> cool. And you guys have any questions for me at all? Yeah. Who who said that? Oh, there. What's up, man? Yeah, you know. Fuck Christmas, dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, actually, I do. I do that. Yeah. During the holidays, yeah. We get around the fire, we drink hot cocoa, worship Satan, <laughs> do all those things. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Anyone else? Oh yeah, you again. Hello. <laughs> um, my main influences. You know, I have a lot of really weird influences, but I have a lot of obvious ones too. Um, Jeff Loomis is obviously a big one for me. You know, he's a he's a friend and and an incredible guitar player. He was a huge inspiration before I even knew him. Um, so he's one of them. Uh, my number one influence is Tony Iommi. Uh, he's the reason I started playing guitar. Uh, back when I was a kid, I used to drive around with my dad in his work truck, listening to Black Sabbath. And uh, first time I heard the down-tuned, distorted, heavy guitars, I was just like, I want to do that. I want to make that sound. And my only goal for guitar was ever to be just as good as Tony Iommi, which I'll probably never do. <laughs> he's a legend. Um, but he's, uh, he's my main guy. He's, I just think he's an incredible songwriter, and even though he's not the cleanest, most technical player on earth, I just think he did something original. He did something that was against the grain for the time. You know, he wrote some pretty dark, controversial music for the time, and I think that's amazing. And uh, it's a big inspiration for me, for sure. So, But then I have a lot of other influences, like Nick Johnson, for example. I play nothing like him, but he's one of my favorite guitar players. One of my favorite dudes, too. So... Where is he? He's back hiding. Probably back there eating apples or something, as it were. Um, you know, I have a lot of uh, like 90s death metal influence in the stuff that I do. Uh, that's kind of, when I was growing up and trying to learn how to play guitar, I would pick up stuff and try to learn it by ear. And uh, a lot of that stuff was 90s Florida death metal, Swedish death metal, stuff like that. Just because I really, I really liked that aggressive uh, you know, dark sound. I was always drawn to that. Even, you know, obviously Black Sabbath kind of started that whole thing for me. And I just kept going to see how much darker and more fucked up it could get. And uh, this guy knows. He's wearing a Nile shirt. He knows how fucked up it gets. <laughs> um, so, yeah, stuff like that. Cool. Anyone else? No? Just want to hear some more music? I'll get you next. Yeah. What's up, man? Yeah, um, most of what I do for just the rhythm tracks, it's all just double tracked. Uh, I don't, I rarely quad track anything, and that's because it tends to get a little messy. It doesn't sound as focused as, and tight. It's I use it for parts that need to sound big and have you know a lot of chord work that needs to kind of bloom out. I'll do quad tracking for stuff like that, but most of it is just uh, simple double tracking, hard pan left, hard pan right, and. Uh, on a seven string guitar, you typically, at least I do anyway, I, I tend to use a little bit less gain than I would on a six string guitar, even even in the same tuning. I don't know why that is, but <clears throat> it's just, I get more clarity out of having just, just enough gain. You know, if you go beyond a certain point, it starts to get into a different territory. Um, I like to have string separation and note separation, even though it still has a ton of gain and it's very saturated, I wanna be able to hear the notes in the chord or whatever, you know, because I, I like to use different chords and things in the song. So um, I would say if you're not happy with your tone now, try using a little bit less gain. Um, what do you use for tone? Software stuff? Okay. Yeah. Um, so try putting like a, you know, like a boost pedal emulation or something in front of whatever amp Sam you're using. Um, roll the gain back on that pedal all the way, turn the tone up on it, and then just uh, adjust the gain on, on the amp sim itself, and it should tighten it up quite a bit. 
Yeah, that that's where the tube screamer comes in. It kind of tightens up and cleans up that low end frequency. Uh, kind of cuts out like that 200 hertz range that tends to be a problem for guitar tone. Um, at least this kind of guitar tone. And uh, yeah, try that. Should should help you a little bit. Cool. You had a question. Um, you know, I barely remember, to be honest. I, I've been playing seven string guitars so long now that it's just like my normal guitar. Um, but really, if you just don't think about it as being different, I think it's a lot easier because you, you have a regular guitar, you have E to E. Beautiful E chord, but then you have this. So... You know, it, it's really, it's just like a regular guitar with one extra low string. Um, and I, I usually tune to drop A so you can get bigger chords. You know, you can get that, the lower strings in there pretty easily. Um, I found it to be a lot more fun, believe it or not. And it's like, oh, I got more, more I can do with it. I can make bigger chords. I got a wider range. I didn't have to detune a six string to get the same range and then lose the high E. Um, Really, it's just a matter of sitting down with one. And I think after about a week or so, you start to really kind of get a feel for it. And then it becomes second nature, you know, just like riding a bike or whatever. So, And actually, now when I pick up a six-string guitar, I feel like I'm really kind of manhandling it. Because I, I tend to cup the neck even on a seven-string, you know. Like, I, I throw my thumb over the top to mute it sometimes. And on a six-string, it's like I'm going, like, all the way over. <laughs> so, Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I got a couple more songs for you guys. Um, so any last questions I can take? I'm happy to do that now. Yeah. The craziest hairstyle in the metal scene? Oh, wow. I get a lot of hair questions at these things. You know that? <laughs> I really do. I get a lot of hair questions. Um, I don't know. Yours is pretty sick, dude. I'd have to say it's pretty, pretty crazy. I'm digging it, man. Who's your barber? Give me his card. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I guess it depends on uh, what kind of hotel shampoo I use. Maybe I have the craziest hair sometimes. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? No? All right. Got a couple more songs, and then uh, we'll be hanging out afterwards over here. We uh, we have some merch and some stuff to sign if you guys are into that. Uh, I've got some guitars you can check out. You're welcome to check this thing out after, too, if you want. This is a... Uh, prototype mark three which uh, i just brought out specifically to try it out on this clinic run um, this is going to be released in 2020 at the nam show and it's the newest version of my schecter signature guitar and if any of you are familiar with the previous models um, you'll notice that this one's a bit different um, it has a maple fretboard rather than an ebony fretboard the body on this one is mahogany rather than swamp ash, which is another first for the KM guitars. It has a maple neck, um, Schecter locking tuners, hip shot bridge, and my Fishman signature pickups in it. And it's just, I really just wanted to go for something that was just no bullshit. You know, it doesn't have anything on it that I don't want or need. It's very elegant, smooth guitar. And uh, you guys are, have, you know, check it out after. It's really cool. I'm digging it. All right? You guys are so quiet. You know there's a coffee shop out there, right? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you guys. Thank you so much for coming out and having us. And uh, thanks for sticking around. And uh, I hope you guys have a great life. I don't know when I'll be back. So hopefully it's not never because this place is too awesome to not come back. So right on. Well, thanks, guys.
All right, guys, thanks so much. Nick Johnson's going to come up here and uh, show you how guitar is actually supposed to be played. <laughs>